My name is Tom Peshak, and I'm the chief photographer for the Save Our Seas Foundation. I recently photographed a story for National Geographic magazine on manta rays. I traveled halfway across the world to the Maldives, a group of islands situated 400 miles south of India. My final destination was Hanifaru, a small, uninhabited islet in the remote northern Ba Atoll, the site of the world's largest manta ray feeding aggregation. The key to success was to reach the island when the southwest monsoon was blowing at its peak. This is when the surrounding seas become the most productive in the Maldives and upwelled nutrients and sunlight explode into a rich phytoplankton soup. Despite their enormous size, manta rays are filter feeders that prey exclusively on small planktonic animals. Currents and tides wash swarms of krill into Hanufaru Bay, setting the stage for a feast that attracts giants from all corners of the Maldives. At any one time, up to 200 manta rays and half a dozen whale sharks feast together on zooplankton in an area smaller than a football field. Photographing this feeding frenzy was an incredible experience, and the sheer number of rays around me was simply overwhelming, with manta wings, tails, and cephalic lobes enveloping me from all sides. I was able to photograph new manta ray behaviors that were only recently discovered by Guy Stevens, a marine biologist funded by the Save Our Seas Foundation, who discovered Hani Faru and now studies this site. Cyclone feeding is without doubt the most dramatic of all manta ray behaviors. It occurs when a train of manta rays exceeds 50 animals, and the tail end links up with the head, resulting in a spiraling, twisting vortex of manta rays. However, this expertly choreographed ray ballet can quickly turn into the ultimate manta train wreck, with hundreds of manta rays crashing into each other, left, right, and center. Now, getting right into the middle of a chaos feeding group was probably the most dangerous part of this assignment. Now, mantas are placid, non aggressive creatures, but in this context, they seem to temporarily lose all sense of coordination. More than once I thought I was going to be knocked unconscious by one of these one-ton giants. But, much to the mantis credit, I only had one minor collision and a few near misses. Despite having only been recently discovered, Hanifaru and its mantis are already under threat. Tourist boats and too many divers and snorkelers can disrupt the feeding activities and in the long run, possibly even displace the mantis and whale sharks from this important foraging ground. Of course, tourism is a much better alternative to killing manta rays for their gill rakers and fins, as they have a slow reproductive rate and are very vulnerable to overfishing and extinction. So if managed correctly, Hanifaro's newfound popularity with international visitors could give mantas long-term protection by providing a strong economic incentive to conserve rather than to hunt them. Much to my delight, on June 8, 2009, World Oceans Day, the Environment Minister of the Maldives, Mohamed Aslam, announced that Hanifara would become a marine protected area, with fishing and boating restricted and diving and snorkeling subject to strict controls. I am really thrilled that the Maldivian government has had the foresight to recognize the importance of this unique site. I'm also very excited by the recent news that the Save Our Seas Foundation will be donating a patrol boat to police the marine reserve. It is my sincere hope that Honey Fowl will always remain a sanctuary for these cyclone feeding manta rays and whale sharks and be a place where people from all over the world come to experience and gain an appreciation for these majestic rays. I just hope that they will tread lightly and that Ba Atoll will become a world leader in sustainable 
marine wildlife tourism.